So there's a scam that I saw on TikTok and it's got me thinking about deconstruction and how Christianity works for some people, but not for others. So this scammer, apparently don't know if this story is true or not, took a thousand people who he had his email, their email addresses. And for half of them, he said, hey, the Patriots are gonna win. For half of them, he said, whatever, the Rough Riders or a different team are going to win. After the game, the people, the 500 people that he had given wrong information to, he never texted them again, wrote them off. The people that had he had given the good information to, the 500 people that won, he split them into two groups. And half of them he told, okay, for the next game, this team is gonna win. The other half, he said, this team is going to win. And again, when that group won, the losing team, he just never talked to those people again. The winning team, he kept just splitting it down, down, down. Until after five games, he had a small group of people, 75 people, to whom he had accurately predicted the last five games. And then he said, I can predict the next game if you give me a hundred bucks or whatever it is. Took the money, run, easy scam. The reason that story is sticking with me is that is really how evangelical Christianity works. You're in the youth group as a kid and they're like, this is what it means to be man, be manly, be tough. This is what it means to be woman, be gentle, be sweet. For some people that works, for the rest of them, they just slowly disappear. Then you get a bit older, they say this is what it means to be an adult, get married, have kids, have a happy family. For some people that works, great for them. For some people they end up marrying an abuser, they can't get married or they get married, they can't have kids. Oh, there's not really a place for those sorts of people in the church. Maybe they're not even really blessed by God. And these people just kind of fade away while the others get chosen to be missionaries and pastors. And we're told, you know, reconcile and forgive and, and stay in contact with your family. And for some people, that's great. For some people, they have abusive, toxic families that they need to cut contact. And then that's not really, oh, they're not really accepted in the church anymore. And there's a strong implication that if God, you know, if you're walking in step with God, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be wealthy, you're going to be happy. But some people have chronic illness. Some people have chronic mental illness. And in so many other ways, some people just don't fit the mold. And there's not really a place for them. And they all have this journey of leaving. And if you've been part of church for any length of time, you know there's so many people for every one person in the church, there's got to be 10 that were there for a while and it didn't work for them. And they're very hurt and they're, they've left. And if you try and talk to the people that are there about, hey, there's problems, there's pain that's being caused. There's people that you've harmed by your teachings and by your beliefs. What they typically say is, I don't know what you're talking about. It worked for me. Well, no shit. You won the fucking lottery. Of course it works for you. It doesn't work for everybody. That's how the con works.